Good morning learners. I am Dr. Mrs. Parveen Sharma. Welcome you all in the studio of NIOS. Today we will discuss under the course code 509 DLED program pedagogy of social science and our topic for today's discussion will be India's social, cultural and linguistic diversity. See, India is one of the most religiously and ethnically diverse nations in the world with some of the most deeply religious societies and culture. Diversity in India is unique. We'll discuss how this diversity in India is unique, in what terms we find endless varieties of physical features and cultural patterns. You know, many languages are spoken here. We have different cultures, we belong to different societies and we speak uh, so many languages. Some of the languages are spoken but they do not exist in their written form. See, the term social refers to society. The society is not synonymous with culture. We'll see what do we mean by society and what do we mean by culture. You know, culture includes both material and non-material elements, all of which are products of human society. But society is usually described in psychological terms, not applicable to material things. For example, sociability, gregariousness, association, the capacity to respond to social stimuli and the ability to communicate socially, etc. I mean to say, we'll discuss in detail how the students, how the persons uh, develop this ability to communicate in the society. Because man is not an oak tree who can live alone. Uh, one has to grow in the society. One needs to interact with the people in the society. In case social is restricted to the above mentioned characteristics of society like gregariousness and adjustment and other characteristics I have just mentioned. The social change refers to changes in mechanisms of human association. You know, when the changes in thought occurs in the society, uh, people take more time in accepting and adaptability of those changes. But when the changes come in the materialistic aspect, people very quickly uh, adapt themselves to those changes. So we'll discuss those aspects in detail. You know, uh, my dear friends, my dear learners, society is composed of human beings interaction. I mean to say, how the things takes place when individuals interact with the other individuals in the society. This interaction produces values, status, roles and techniques. I mean to say how the values uh, change their shape, how we uh, achieve our status, how we uh, perform our roles and how the changes in our uh, role play uh, occurs. This all is possible due to this interaction when we interact with the other people in the society. So we can call it culture. We can say culture is the result of social interaction. Sometime uh, unknowingly, the culture and social, these two terms are used synonymously. They are not synonymous. So, we will see that culture is the result of social interaction. Just now, a second before, uh, my dear students, I have mentioned that when uh, various peoples interact with other people in the society, then some values, some status and the uh, other aspects uh, occurs and uh, that is the result and that result is known as the culture. I know I uh, will discuss what are the influencing factors which affect the society. Uh, to begin with, I will say that these factors which influence uh, the social diversities are like technological aspects, industrial aspects, economic aspects and ideological and religious aspects. You know, all these aspects may be, uh, you know, 
the changes in the technology are taking place at a very fast speed. So, we have to keep pace with these technological changes if we want to move further, if we want to keep pace with the advanced countries. So, we will have to adapt ourselves to accept these technological changes. That is why we say that there is the diversity in our social, uh, in our cultural and in our linguistic aspects. Right now, we are discussing uh, how the changes uh, occurs in the social aspects, how people are diverse in the social aspects and changes occurs in the industrial area and uh, economy wise and changes occurs uh, in the ideologies of the people when we interact with the other uh, people who belongs to other society. And uh, as we know, India is a secular country. So, uh, the ideologies also affect the uh, people's how they interact in the society. You know, social diversity in Indian society, we find racial diversity, religious diversity and caste diversity uh, according to Varna and Jati. So, people perform, uh, used to perform uh, their task according to the Varna and then later on according to the Jati. So, social diversity is a feature of society which is determined by caste, class, religion, occupational pattern in a given territory. See how the differentiation between the people are determined on the basis of caste and class. Of course, there are so many classes, there are so many castes, there are so many religion in our India. So, socially we are diverse, but we will see how we are united in spite of being so many diversities in social aspect. Uh, later on, after discussing the social uh, aspects and the meaning of cultural uh, diversity and linguistic diversity, we will discuss with you what is the role of education, what a role a teacher can play in bringing uh, or the um, just uh, training or teaching the children in the class in the school, how they can move towards uh, united nation in spite of being uh, so many diversities in various fields. So, we see that customs and manners of people greatly differ. We differ in our manners and we follow different customs because we belong to different class, we belong to different uh, caste. People of different region use different type of dresses. Their eating habits and custom differs because we have different eating habits and we like to dress up uh, in a different manner. Uh, the people in north uh, dress up in a different manner and people in how uh, dress up in different manner. So, th this is the diversity uh, on the basis of dress, their eating habits and customs and people are uh, attached somewhere to their customs. A successful community in which individuals of different race, ethnicity, religious beliefs, social economy status, language, geographical origin, gender, these all aspects bring different knowledge, different background, experience and interest for the benefit of their diverse community. See, try to understand. Of course, there are many religions, there are many languages and, and we are uh, basically attached to our customs. So, these things, these all aspects, they bring different knowledge because people uh, belong to different background and when they interact with other people in a particular community, they bring different experiences with them. They have different interests, but all these experiences and all this knowledge, when one applies for the benefit of the community, then our nation can progress. We have to understand this aspect and we have to inculcate this kind of feeling among our students. You know, after discussing the social diversity, I would like to throw some light on the aspect of cultural diversity. If we speak on this aspect, it is observed that India has a remarkable cultural diversity. You should understand that cultural diversity is important because our country, workplaces and schools increasingly consist of various cultural, racial and ethnic groups. We can learn from one another, but first we should have an understanding of each other. My dear friends, after knowing the aspects of social diversity we see 
culturally we are diverse because our workplace differs and our racial and ethnic groups differs so we can learn uh, so many aspects from each other we can learn uh, so many things from the other cultures but before learning we have to see what do we actually mean by this cultural diversities and how we understand each other that is important we are well aware that people in india are related to different cultures they have different viewpoints even within a province multicultural traditions exist it will not be exaggeration that this big country can be called a subcontinent my dear friends it has so vast area if it is it will not be exaggerating if we call this big country a subcontinent so we know that culturally people are diverse and the people who belong to a particular culture they are sort of attached they have sentimental attachment to their cultures so we are supposed as a teacher uh, to teach our students that we have to respect all the cultures we and we have to understand uh, all the cultures uh, see in different parts different cultures have evolved on one hand all cultures share some of the characteristics and on another hand each culture has its own unique characteristics it's clear the children brought up in a particular culture will develop accordingly because you know if there is a child who is brought up in a particular culture definitely the norms and uh, customs of that cultures uh, will be inculcated in that particular child and definitely that child will be attached to the customs of that culture of course cultural variety adds to cultural prosperity but there exist a fear of disorganization when the distinctions are used to create differences to avoid this fear we are supposed to accept and pay respect to each culture and its followers due to mobility one interacts with people of another culture that can be horizontal and vertical meaning by it is essential for everyone in order to remain united we have to learn how to respect other cultures also this will help us to make our nation strong and united so after knowing the uh, social diversity we have come to know what do we mean by cultural diversity and now we will discuss what do we actually mean by linguistic diversity well learners by now we have come to know what do we mean by social diversity and what do exactly we mean by cultural diversity so uh, let us see what do we mean by linguistic diversity india has a rich heritage of language and literature some languages might not be spoken but have left an influence over almost all languages of india because right now i have spoken to you my dear friends that when a person from one culture or one society interact with the person of another culture or another society and the speakers of another languages in that interaction we influence each other sometime directly we are not aware what influences which language or which person has brought to another person or another language directly or indirectly these influence influences occur over each other see the languages of india are divided broadly into two families that is indo-aryan and dravidian the languages spoken in northern india belong to first group that is the indo-aryan and languages of southern india belong to second category right now uh, about the classification of the languages i think this is sufficient for our learners to understand these two group of languages indo-aryan and dravidian uh, meaning by when the language which is spoken in northern india belongs to the first group of, uh, that is the indo-aryan and the languages which are spoken in the southern india they belong to the dravidian the second group there exist more than one dozen languages and many dialects in indian society this is really a great characteristic of indian society see how diversely we are placed in our 
uh, India. There are so many languages, so there are so many dialects, really great characteristics of Indian society and really a great challenge for the learners. People speak different languages in different parts of India like Hindi, Urdu, Punjabi, Gujarati, Marathi, Asmi, Kashmiri, Tamil, Telugu, Malayalam and Kannad etc. No language group has any difficulty in its purgation, but when discrimination is done on the basis of language, then it turns the other group tense and aggressive. You know, uh, we as a teacher and we as a teacher educators know that in our target group, maybe we are teaching in a junior group or in a senior group, uh, junior classes or senior classes, students are belonging to different cultures and different societies and their uh, regional language might be differing. So we have to understand that we are not supposed to discriminate between the students because if that kind of discrimination is done on the basis of language, what will be the result? It is clear that when discrimination is being done by anyone in the society by any stakeholder of the community or the teacher, then the other group will be tense and ag aggressive and there will be conflict among the people. Then we see lingualism is a tendency which encourages one group to profess that my language is better than the another group. This tendency of ism is harmful for a nation. This is the root cause which is getting more tense and problematic. Sometimes this difference becomes the reason of conflict, dharna and aggression. Sometimes we notice we come across that one group is in conflict of the another group and people are sitting on dharna to get their uh, <clears throat> the things fulfilled that their demands fulfilled and that they become aggressive the basic reason behind this conflict and dharna and aggression and fulfilling of their demands is the reason behind it this ism that is the lingualism when discrimination is being done between uh, the learners between the students between in the people on the basis of language definitely it is a uh, cause or it is a reason to make the other group aggressive. So this poses a problem and becomes difficult to accept objective attitude. Behind this lingualism there are certain problems like which should be a national language, what should be the place of English language because most of the time in India we quarrel on the basis of language that which should uh, be our national language, which should be given top priority, this is my language, I belong to this particular group. When on these basis if we are quarreling, we are fighting with each other, we are in conflict of each other, how can we think of uh, being united? So this will be difficult for us and this will pose a great problem. So due to provincialism, people advocate for the language of their own province. In this way, this diversity of language poses different problems in Indian society. We have seen that within the same province, we quarrel with each other with our brother and sister that this is my language and sentimentally I am attached to this language, this is more important and you are inferior because you are attached to this language. So when the, on the basis of language within the same province, within the same nation, we quarrel with our brother and sister, this uh, create an obstacle in our unity. So diversity of language poses different problems in Indian society. Although variety is conducive to cultural prosperity, it also affords a useful opportunity to those who want to arouse linguistic sentimental attachments and create differences. You know, we agree, we accept that when there is the variety, we brings more prosperity. But this variety should not be a cause of or should not be an obstacle in our progress, in our unity. Because 
we can learn uh, from each other when there are so many languages and the people belonging to different languages, different cultures, different society are there in our group. So, we can learn from each other instead of uh, considering the other person inferior because he or she speaks different language and, be, and do not belong to my language group. So, this linguistic sentiment and attachment sometimes create differences. Of course, we should be attached to sentimental uh, to our customs to our cultures but at the same time teacher can instill this feeling among the learners among the students and uh, side by side this is the parents duty also that they should create in the minds of their children that all languages all cultures our customs are good and we have to pay respect to each See, destructive riots and conflicts on the basis of language is not good. It spoils the growth of young mind. They start hating each other, which can blunt moral and intellectual development. So, we need to teach children positive attitude towards all languages and its speakers. See, we have seen by now that there is the social diversity in India, there is cultural diversity in India, there is linguistic diversity in India and we have come to know by this discussion in the session that in spite of so many diversities in various fields, we have to stand united and this is the unique beauty of our nation, what is that is the unity in diversity. Here now, we will discuss what is the role of education, what a teacher can do. My dear friends, teacher can play a vital role in this field because teacher can instill in the minds of the students, in the minds of the children that of course we belong to different customs, we belong to different languages, but how we have to understand the other persons who belong to different cultures, who speak different languages and how can we accept them, how we can adapt ourselves to the different cultures and different society and how uh, we can uh, pay respect to other languages and other customs. That is the unique beauty of our nation that is why we say united where we stand and divided we fall. So, we have uh, to maintain its unity in spite of being its diversity. We see what is the role of education? Education for all and industrial development is a crucial tool to unite a country which is divided on the basis of wealth, caste and religion. The real education can take place in a secular environment. Students can be taught a lesson of tolerance and love through this unity in diversity. Through education, spirit of veneration, tolerance, peace and harmony can be inculcated among students. Teacher can teach the students to respect all. Education system and society influence each other. So, education should stress on development of fundamental social, moral and spiritual values. So, I hope we are clear that a teacher can play a vital role in uh, training the minds of the children how to bring social, moral and spiritual values and how a teacher can teach the children in the class that we have to pay respect to the people of all languages, all cultures and all societies. Lastly, in this way, we can say that teacher can train the young minds to respect social diversity, but cultural inertia is the first important factor which comes in the way of accepting social diversity. Cultural inertia refers to those beliefs, customs and traditions which come down to us from our forefathers. We want to stick to resolutely and blindly thinking them as sacred. Education should break this inertia. Teacher can teach the children how to sublimate self-interest. A teacher can prepare the students how to acquire new knowledge from the people of other culture, society and linguistic group. And in the end, that is why these days we talk about multilingualism. In the last, it can be concluded that this is the duty of the teacher to inculcate a feeling among the children, how can we remain united in spite of diversity. And with this note, I am thankful to all the learners. I hope this is clear to you once again. Thank you.